What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video I'm going to cover everything you need to know on paying taxes on sales of your gold and silver. Let's do it! Thank you so much for watching my video, I sincerely appreciate it. If you want to learn more about investing in precious metals, or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver, then subscribe to my channel. This video is all about taxes on gold and silver. So I'm gonna cover capital gains tax, I'm gonna cover what has to be reported to the IRS. I'm gonna cover pretty much everything I possibly can. I've done a ton of research for this video, but I do have to say that I am not a financial advisor and I'm also not an expert in taxes. I'm not a CPA or anything like that. So before you actually invest in metals or before you do your taxes on them, then definitely consult your own tax professional, lawyer, um, and make sure you get all the information from them because stuff changes over time too. Right now it's 2019, I'm filming this video in September, and stuff changes. So, and, and also this video is just on taxes for the United States government. This is federal taxes. I'm not going to cover any other countries and I'm also not going to cover any states. So you'd have to do your own research on state taxes. But okay, let's get into this. So first off, let's start with capital gains tax. What is capital gains tax? What does it apply to? How much is it? Um, so capital gains tax on selling your precious metals is up to 28%. And that is only on profits that you make. Um, so if you're in a lower tax bracket, then you would pay whatever the maximum is. Uh, let's you know, let's say your taxes you pay at the end of the year is like 25% or something. You'd only have to pay 25% on profits that from your metals that you sold. If your tax bracket was higher, if it was like 33%, then you'd only have to pay the 28 because that's the max on gold and silver. So uh, let's give you an example here. Let's say you went out and bought this. American Silver Eagle, very beautiful. Let's say you bought this for 20 bucks and then you waited a number of years and you sold it for 30 bucks. Now I should say it doesn't matter what the premium was on this. It could have been a $2 premium, $3 premium, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just go with the price of the piece, the whole price. So you paid 20 and sold it for 30. So you made a $10 profit. So that year, the following year when you do your taxes in April or whatever, you would uh, tell the government that you made $10 profit on selling your asset, um, and then you'd have to pay the $2.80 at that point. So that's essentially what capitals, capital gains tax is and how it works. Now, this uh, reporting of the profits that you made, you would do on your own. There's no entity that's going to report for you that you made a sale or you made a profit. Um, there are a few examples, which we are going to go over in this video, the mandatory reporting to the IRS. I'm going to go over that a little bit later after we cover capital gains tax. Um, and I'm also going to cover reporting when you buy precious metals, because there are certain instances where you'd actually have to report to the IRS on purchases, not just sales. Uh, but let's cover capital gains tax fully. So that in that example, you made a $10 profit and you had to pay the 28%. Um, now, what if you didn't make any profits on your sale of your precious metals? Uh, so let's say you bought one of these guys right here. These are pretty cool. Or let's say you bought a whole monster box of them, okay? You bought 500 of these owls from New Way. Pretty sweet. And then you went and you sold them, and you sold them for the same price that you bought them for, and you didn't make any money. Well, then you wouldn't be required to pay any taxes on the sale, okay? So it's only off of profits, um, so that's, that's pretty easy to understand. And I also, you know, it, it's interesting that you have to report it yourself, right? So I'm not going to tell you what you should do. I'm not going to tell you, uh, you know, legal, well, I'm going to tell you legally, you, you are supposed to report it. But, uh, a lot of times when we buy our precious metals, we go and we buy them with cash and we don't know what you may or may not know the dealer's name. Uh, they probably don't know your name unless you introduce yourself, right, and become friends with them or whatever, but they don't know where you live or anything like that, and you give them cash, and then you get your metals, you take them home, and then when you sell them, you probably go back to the same guy, and you sell him your precious metals, and he gives you cash, 
And so it's they're both cash transactions and really no one knows that you bought or sold the metals or what your profits are. So it's up to you to do your own due diligence in reporting to the government that you did make profits and then go ahead and pay the taxes. Now, do I think that's right that you have to pay taxes on precious metals? Absolutely not. I think that's it's crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, I don't think it's right. I, I disagree with that. I don't think the federal government should be taxing these. Um, but let's talk about what qualifies for having to pay taxes on. So any type of gold, silver, platinum, or palladium qualifies. So the government pretty much views everything as a collectible. So we're talking literally these bars, they would look at as a collectible. Um, American Silver Eagles, those are coins. They would look at that as a collectible. Um, gold, what is this here? This is a American Gold Eagle. They would look at this as a collectible. Um, so anything, even uh, constitutional silver. I think I got one right here. Check this one out. We got a 1964. This is a beautiful Washington quarter. It's 90% silver. Um, really gorgeous. Uh, but this would also be considered a collectible. So any type of gold or silver, they consider to be a collectible and they they have you pay the 28% capital gains tax when you sell it. Um, so that's pretty much how that works. And let's go over mandatory reporting when you buy or when you sell because a lot of times the dealer uh, won't have to report anything to the IRS. But like I said earlier, there are a few instances where that's the case. So first off, let's go on buying. So I got a couple little pamphlets here um, that we're gonna, I'm gonna go over these. This one is off of Atmex, I think. Uh, no, this is JM Bullion. Okay, so this one's from JM Bullion. So this is when do we have to report to the IRS when you're buying gold or silver, okay? So it says, if I buy more than 10,000 gold or silver, is my order reported? Okay, so uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna read the whole thing, but let me read this top part here. Uh, JM Bullion respects the privacy of our customers, never discloses any of their uh, purchases to the government. We are, however, under legal obligation to report any cash payments. So that's key right there. They're saying for cash, we receive for purchases that exceed $10,000. Um, or if you get multiple ones in 24 hours that are over 10 grand. Okay, so yeah, they, they have to file the 10, uh, or sorry, the uh, 8300 form. So now the 8300 form, um, they they go over all this stuff, but basically it's if you make a purchase of $10,000 or more in cash or cash equivalent, then they would have to fill out this form. And what goes on the form is your name, your address, your driver's license number, and your social security number. So if you're making these big purchases of cash for um for precious metals then you're you're gonna have to fill out these forms the 8300 form now this is to prevent tax fraud and uh, that's why they make you fill these out but if you're making these large purchases then you're going to be on the irs radar so just uh, to let you okay, know. Okay, and then real quick here on which forms of payment constitute as cash. The way they have this written here is really confusing. Uh, so I'm just going to break it down for you as simply as I can. So it says um, the term cash refers to the following methods of payment. Um, and then it says cashier's checks, money orders, bank drafts, and traveler's checks. It, term cash also applies to any U.S. or foreign currency that's received during a transaction. Um, so that's what qualifies as cash. Now, who does the reporting to the IRS depends on which one of these you do. So if you're just paying in actual cash, then it's going to be up to the the bullion dealer, like JM Bullion would have to do it, the reporting. Uh, but if you do a cashier's check, then it's up to the bank to do the reporting to the IRS. And then it says payments rendered using personal checks, bank wires, credit, debit cards, PayPal, ACH transfers are also exempt from reporting regardless of purchase amount. Okay, so a little bit of info there. 
And then it does talk about uh, related transactions. So this is essentially if you make one purchase over $10,000, then for sure it's and you pay cash for sure it's getting reported if you do multiple purchases in 24 hour period like a eight thousand dollar purchase and then a three thousand dollar purchase a little bit later then that's also going to get reported and then it talks about why are they requ required to report them and there's some information there as well uh, so you can pause and read up on that if you like so that's um when you're actually going to have to fill out again that's the 8300 form there Okay, so that's when the bullion dealer is gonna report to the IRS that you have made a large transaction, you've purchased uh, $10,000 or more of gold and silver. Okay, so that's when the IRS would be aware that you're making a large purchase. Now, what about selling? Because we're talking about selling precious metals mostly in this video and paying the capital gains tax. So when are you actually gonna have to tell the government that yes, I am selling a large amount of gold or silver, and I have the information on that form. Um, that's the 1099B IRS form. And uh, this little pamphlet here, this one is the one from Atmex there. So we're gonna go over this real quick. Um, so what is a 1099B IRS form? Uh, one of the purposes of the IRS Form 1099B is for precious metals dealers to report the uh, proceeds, customer sales, uh, to the dealer of any precious metals uh, from the IRS reportable items list if you have additional questions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so th there's essentially a list on here, and then if you sell any of these things in these amounts, you're going to have to do the reporting. And I don't know why it's on two sheets. The way it printed was absolutely terrible. Okay, so the way that was printed was just annoying me way too much. So I just went ahead and cut it and taped it so you can see all the items here on one sheet. Now, again, this is the 1099B form for mandatory IRS reporting on sales of precious metals. So if you sell these things in these amounts, you're, this is going to get reported to the IRS. And again, this form is going to have your social security number, your address, name, all that stuff on here. Okay, so what is what has to be reported to the IRS when you sell it? So gold bars, minimum fineness, um, you can read the minimum fineness on those, but it just says any size bars totaling one kilo or more. So any large gold bars, that's going to have to get reported to the IRS. So totaling a kilo, so that's gonna be a very expensive gold bar. I mean, we're talking like uh, literally forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, somewhere in there, depending on the price of gold, you know. Um, so probably closer to 50,000 right now on those kilo bars. So that's, that's a pretty big amount right there in just cash that you'd be getting back. But uh, anyway, that has to get reported to the IRS. Silver bars. Any size bars totaling 100 or sorry, 1,000 troy ounces or more. So if you have a thousand troy ounce bar, or if you have 1,001 troy ounce bars, then that's going to have to get reported. And I will say, I guess too, on the gold bars, you could have 33 one ounce gold bars, and that would get reported as well. Okay, if you sold them all at the same time. Now platinum bars, any size bars totaling 25 troy ounce or more. So these are for bars again. Palladium bars, any size bars totaling 100 troy ounces or more. So these are for bars. And then down here we have a couple random gold ones here. So there's gold one ounce Krugerrands, uh, the Krugs. Uh, and if you sell 25 or more of them, that's going to get reported. Uh, there's the gold one ounce maple leaves. If you sell 25 or more, that's going to get reported. And something I do want to note is that's only on the one ounce gold maple leaves. So if you sell like a hundred of the half ounce gold maple leaves, that does not need to get reported to the IRS by the bullion dealer. So if you're going to be buying um, gold maple leaves, I personally would recommend just going with the half ounce because the premium isn't that much higher. Um, but that's, you know, that's just my own thing. You can do whatever you want, obviously. And then uh, gold one ounce Mexican Onzas, uh, 25 one ounce coins or more. And then the last one, which is interesting here, it's the US 90% silver coins. 
any combination of dimes, quarters, or half dollars totaling $1,000 face value or more. So if you sell a whole bunch of constitutional silver over $1,000 face value, then that's gonna get reported as well. But the thing I wanna mention is that that's only on the 90% silver coins. So if you're stacking the Kennedy half dollars that are 40% silver and you go over 1,000 face, that doesn't need to get reported. Also the war nickels that are 35% silver, if you sell over $1,000 face value of those, that does not need to get reported as well. So that would not trigger you having to fill out the 1099B form. Okay, so that is all of the mandatory reporting items for selling. Now, regardless of whether this gets mandatory reported to the government or not, you, you are still required to let the government know if you made profits on the sales of these items and then go ahead and pay the appropriate amount of taxes. And again, you should absolutely talk to your own tax professional if you have a CPA that you're already working with um, or if you know someone who does taxes, talk with them about selling your precious metals. But uh, like I said earlier, whether you have to report to the government or not that you made a purchase or a sale, uh, regardless of if those forms got filled out, it's still on you to do your own due diligence and let the government know if you made profits on the sales of your precious metals. I think that the example that I made at the start of this video is pretty much the easiest way to think about it. If you buy something and then sell it for a profit, whether it's gold, silver, platinum, palladium, whatever it is, then you just take that profit that you made, take 28% of that, and that's probably what you're gonna have to pay to the government as far as taxes, the capital gains taxes on your gold and silver. So uh, I, I really, really hope that I was able to help break it down in an easy way for you to understand. Um, if you have any questions, definitely just leave a comment down below in regards to taxes on gold and silver. Um, I'll definitely do my best to try and answer all the questions, but again, I'm not a tax expert. Uh, do your own research for sure. And thank you so much for watching the video. I do sincerely appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Silver Dragons, out.